In this video we're looking at how to create a book template in Affinity Publisher. My name's Robert Chalmers, I'm a YouTube creator in making the video in 2020. Now this is a typical paperback um, spread out flat. You've got the front cover on the right hand side, the spine and the back cover on the left hand side with various components of that cover set out for the printer. E-books and paperbacks in addition to hardbacks are some of the types of books that you will um, be looking at. Book templates are a great time saver and they are very handy to have. This tutorial will walk you through setting up a book template and it will include the cover, spine and inside pages. If you master these techniques you should be able to apply them to any size book including e-books and paperback novels. It's really up to you. Now the book covers, including spines, is what we'll start with. It's a good habit to build the outside covers in a separate Affinity Publisher file. Don't build them all together. You don't want your covers in the same file as the content of the book, the inside of the book. They're quite different. And there's also the spine of the book to consider your inside pages won't show the spine. So it's all much easier to do if you keep these in separate files. You're also less likely to make unwanted changes to the body of the book or the cover. Now the book size. First up, you need to determine what size you want your book to be. Now this may sound easy, but if you look on the um, on the Kindle or Kindle Direct Publishing site or any of those, um, you will see that there are quite a variety of sizes. But the US novel size, the standard size, is 6 by 9 inches and that's what we'll start with here. As you become a little more confident or want a different book size, you simply apply the different measurements and that's fairly straightforward. Remember that you'll be producing the cover first so you need to double the width. This will accommodate the front and back cover and the spine and is the size of the book when opened flat. Now you need to know your book's final page count and paper stock. It seems counterintuitive as I say but it's very important in calculating the spine's width. Now if you read through the document here and I'll take my time with it most print shops work on a count of around 320 words per page. So if you've got a 15,000 word document, or a 50,000 word document, more like it, um, it's reasonably easy to calculate the approximate number of pages. Now remember, that's not the number of physical pages. That's the number of words on, a fa on the face of a page, and each page has two faces. So if you've got 300 words on page 1 and 300 words on page 2, that's one page, one physical page. Don't make the mistake of thinking that if you divide 50,000 by 320, that's the number of physical pages in your book. It'll actually be twice the number of pages. So take that number and divide it by 2. Then you work with your page per inch count and that's around 300 pages per inch PPI. And you've got the cover weight and the weight of the paper which is usually about 60 grams. KDP, Ingram, Spark and all of the others of course have all these calculations online. So even if you don't use them it doesn't hurt to have an account so you can go and look at the many, many pages of help they've got that will guide you through setting up that rather technical part of your book. But for this exercise we're starting off at the beginning and you're working out the width of your book's spine. So if you've got 150 pages divided by 300 or half an inch. That's for a paperback. For a hardback you've got the thickness of the boards used for the cover, so there's another calculation to take into place. You can fine-tune the spine measurements later. 
Um, and all that does, because your files in your paper cover, your book cover is in one file, you've only got one small file to make adjustments in. OK, let's start a new cover, shall we, without any further ado. Start by opening Publisher and going to File, New, New Document. Now this is for a standard 6 by 9 inch paperback that has 150 pages. Now, as it says here, you can follow the instructions there. Check, check the appropriate boxes, look at the detail. You've got a page width of 12.5 inches. That's twice the covers plus the half inch for the spine. The height remains at 9 inches. Your, it's a default master. You untick facing pages and the bleed area, make sure you put point 0.125 all around. That allows for the printing to go right up to or over the edge of your cover. Now then, with Affinity Publisher open, we go to File and New to start our book cover. We want to set it to Print number of pages to one, number of pages to one, facing page is on but we want it ticked off, now set it to 12.5 inches by 9 inches, the, it's, well, you would think it was 12 inches because it's 6 by 9 but it's 12.5 because we've got half an inch we're allowing for our spine. Down the bottom, we go to the bleed, which is there. Set that, as I have, to 0 0.125 on all four sides. And then click Create. And there's our document. Now, having watched a little video, you should be a little more confident at that. So now let's draw out some guides for the spine. Activate the ruler by selecting View, then Show Rulers, or using Control R. And there you can see on the right hand side, View, Show Rulers, and the rulers there appear around the document. Then on the left side ruler, Click and drag a guide and drop it in the centre of the page at 6.25 inches. This places a guide in the centre of your document. The right side is the front cover and the left side is the back cover. All fairly straightforward. Now draw out two more guides and place one to the left and one to the right of the centre guide. Together, those two guides create the half inch spine that we calculated. And I'll show you in just a moment an easy way of doing that. Your book cover template is ready for designing. Now you can see there that I've selected View, Guides Manager, and you can determine the position exactly of the vertical guides. There's one at 6 inches, one at 6.25, and one at 6.5. When you've set those you just click close and your guides will be in the right place. Now that we have our blank document what we need to do is set up the spine. So to do that first we need to um, enable the rulers so we go down here and show rulers now there's the top of the page. Now remember our, our spine and page width is 12 and a half inches. So there's half an inch for the spine. Go to the left hand side here and you can see the ruler, the cursor over the left hand side and just click in there, just behind the ruler and you can drag a ruler out to the center and you can see the the um, you can see the count 6.250 inches in the middle. Oh, I let it go. OK, let's do that again. Held on to it for too long. 6.250 and there it is there. 
Now that's the center of the document. That ruler will stay there if you make sure that you go to file and save. So you save your working document. Untitled? Oh, okay. Page template. Okay. I hadn't saved it before. Now we need another guide, quarter of an inch this side of it. So that's six inches. And there we have it. That one's six inches. That one's 6.25 and we need one more ruler we go over here 6. Point oh that's really hard to get never mind what you can do you can leave that ruler there then you go to the to set view the guide manager we can set it in the guides manager and there's your guide manager We've got one at 6 inches, one at 6.25, and we want one at 6.5. So that's 0, 0. We can just leave it at 0. It doesn't need to be 0, 0. 6.5 inches. Now those three guides there are exactly in the right place. So you've got column guides, gutters 0.33, left, right, spread, nine inches and so on and now that you've done that you can remove that because we don't need that anymore so we've drawn out two more guides from the one in the center and you can delete the center guide if you like but I prefer to leave the center guide there because it tells you immediately it's the center of the document and when you come to putting the um, text and images or whatever you want to put in the center there that's a good place to have the center line because you know exactly where the center of your document is remember that those guides are on the fold of your covers so don't put anything over the folds unless you don't mind the fact that it will wrap right around the cover and that's it Make sure you save it. I've got page template. Not very, not very um, informative. We could save as, instead of page template, save as 6 by 9. Page template 6 by 9. There we go. And that's all there is to it. The next thing we do is the inside pages. And that's in a separate file, remember? Okay, so now we're going to look at the inside pages, setting up the body of the book. This part is fairly straightforward. So you begin by closing the previous document and open a new document, file new document. This time set the number of pages to 150 and make sure facing pages is checked. Set the width to 6 inches, not 12, 6, because we're only dealing with pages now. And of course leave the height at 9. This means you calculate the inside page size based on the size of your book. And there's the new document settings. You can see page width and page height, document in inches, number of pages 150, default master and facing pages. Just leave everything else the same. The bleed is still the same at 0.125 and you can leave that there for the time being. Columns and margins remain the same. Set bleed for your inside pages of 0.125. Your pages may actually not use a bleed but it's a good idea to have it at the beginning just in case. You can always take it out if you don't need it later on. Depends on the content. Then you click create, create to create your new document. And there's your book body with settings applied. You've got a master page at the top and page 1, 2 and 3, 4 and 5 and so on um, down that column. 
Now here's the video guide. Now we need to set up the pages for the inside pages. Now this is a new document, remember, we don't want to overwrite the cover document. So we're going to simply set up a new document. So you go to New, click on File New, click on New, and we still have Custom Applied. The width is now 6 inches, not 12 inches, because we're talking about our book pages. So there's 6 by 9 DPI 300, which is standard, we're in inches. Number of pages, 150. They're the in initial number of pages. Now obviously you can remove these or add to them as you continue through the document. Facing pages, it's the default master with facing pages ranged horizontally and starting on the right. The first page is on the right. This is normal practice in a book. You don't ever, I think, open a book and start on the left hand page. Um, the colour format, just leave all that standard. Margins, we can leave all that standard, include margins or not, and that's standard. It's defaults to on, so you include margins. The bleed is 0.125 all the way around. We'll leave that because sometimes you need bleed and sometimes you don't. Now you can always ignore that or take it out later on, but if you don't have it in, it's it can be difficult to add it if you discover you need it. So have it in there to start with. And that point, that 0 0.125 is a standard all the way around. Okay, if you don't know what bleed is, don't worry about it for the moment, just put it in. Now let's create the document, and there it is created. That's your master page up there. You can, you can put anything you like in there, but it will apply to every page following, to all 150 pages, unless you change it later on and add more master pages. But we won't deal with master pages yet. So there's page one on the right and page two and three, there and there, four and five, six and seven and so on. And there's your first page there ready to go. It's as easy as that to get that set up. File, save as, and let's call it um, six by nine, six by nine template and pages only. Okay, that's all I need to do with this. It saves it in a Finistic Publisher and that's it. There we go, and that little job is done. Now page numbers are an interesting um, addition. Don't forget most books have page numbers. However, if you're doing an EPUB, you really don't need page numbers because they're fairly irrelevant in, a, in an e-book. But for a printed book, you will need page numbers. So on the Pages panel, you select a master page from the, mar from the window, from the Pages window on the left. You double click on it to bring it up in the uh, working area. So create a text frame to place your page number field in and optionally an extra header or footer text. Select the artistic text tool to highlight that area. You can see it on the bottom of those pages there. From the text menu select insert fields page number and a hash symbol indicates the page number. It's quite difficult to see there, but on the right hand side one you can see the hash number of already the hash I've already created. The hash will be replaced by the page number. Now to, <coughs> now to show you page numbering, let's have a look. Now we're on page one as you can see in the document here. We don't yet know that it's page one of course. So let's just select that so we the the um, the move tool so I don't inadvertently add something to the document. To do page numbering we start at the master page. Double click on the master page and it brings it up. Now the first thing you need to do is put in a couple of text frames. And for that you can use the frame text tool. Let's put our text frames down the bottom here, shall we? There's a text frame. Now back to the move tool because I want to move that slightly. There we go, it's dead center. 
and it's sitting on the bottom line. I'll make a copy of that, Command C, and then paste it back in, Command V, so that there's two of them there now, and I can move one. You see that? There's one there, and I've got one here, which I'll move over here and place. So we've got page numbers on the, both the left and the right pages. If that's the right page, page one will have a page number on it. There's a lot more to this, of course, than meets the eye. And there's quite a bit of help in the following text files, in, in the following slides, sorry. Now we want to add numbers to that, so we've got to go back there and select the artistic text tool so that the selected text frame allows text. Then you go up to the to where it says text and go to insert fields page number and it will put a page number in that field. You can just see it blinking on and off there. It's a hash sign. Now we go to that one. You can see the hash sign back there now. There's a hash sign. And you can fiddle around with the borders and size of that text file. But for now I just wanted to show you that. Text. Insert a field. And it's a page number. And there it is there. Now I'll go back to the move tool so I can just click in there. There's a page number there and a page number there. Just to check, let's go and have a look here. Double click on that, brings it up. There's page one. There's page two and page three. Back to the master page. Now if you want to start sections, page numbering in other sections, and most books don't start on page one, because that's just not the way it's done, you'll have um, table of contents and all sorts of things to start there. So you create sections. Now I don't want to get into sections here because it becomes long and complex. For now that gives you page numbers and you now know where to look for page numbering. Okay. All done in your master page. And you can see there's a whole lot of detail here. Um, page numbers are typically added as placeholders to your master pages. You can have more than one master page. Now you can have more than one master page and apply those master pages to various sections of your book. You'll find all this particular information in the Affinity Publisher help file under what else? Page numbers. Page numbers are dynamic fields and they update as your pages are added and subtracted. And how you go about doing it is written there again for you. And that, thank you, is the end of the tutorial. Thank you for watching.